All right, well, good afternoon and welcome back to the CIS Coaches Show here for another week. Uh, we had a bye week this past week and uh, we're excited that you joined us on our broadcast at PK Young. We'll get into some of that uh, as we took on the Blue Wave a couple weeks ago and we're now preparing for uh, St. Pete Gibbs uh, this week in just a couple of days, Coach. And so uh, we'll get to all that and all the discussions and the questions we've had sent in as well, too. Uh, which is what Coach is seeing this uh, about midpoint through the year. So we're glad that you joined us here for the Quarterback Club. Uh, once again, we'd like to thank our sponsors that make this possible. Uh, we'll start off with our platinum level sponsors. Of course, our Quarterback Club and President, Derek Collins, we appreciate him. Uh, A&R Construction Concepts, Little Giant Farmers Market, anonymous donors from the class of 1989, We've also had several people saying that they're going to actually have a class war, a class challenge from all the different uh, classes that have uh, graduated the past few years and see who has the most uh, to support the Hawthorne quarterback club. Fun. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you hope to see, what was it, 2004? Yeah. 2004, yeah. okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll see. Hopefully my class of 98 steps up. I've seen a few of them on there as well. Um, our gold sponsors and that have provided some meals as well too and please chime in coach if i miss anybody uh, especially since we've had a few new ones come in as well too but lnt express john and robin turk hawthorne insurance with donna bowles diane's old time barbecue uh, with diane tillman aesthetic printing reading uh, florida septic burger barn mike over there uh, those 40 pieces are on the board and on your plate yep. tastes good uh, moore's metalworks Southern State Duck Masters, the parents of the All program. Parents, yep. Yeah, they, they cook some yep. as well. Uh, the Barn at Deep Creek, uh, Raised Metal Works, so they just stepped up as well too. And actually they just became one of the newer sponsors that we had, okay. so that, nice. was, that was good. Um, and we also have uh, Bronze Sponsors, Pumpkin Patch uh, Child Care, uh, Hawthorne Masonic Lodge, number 103, Free and Accepted Masons, uh, New Hope United Methodist Church, Reverend Eugene and Yvonne Herring, uh, First United Methodist Church, Pastor Stacy Spence, uh, and also you know constant shout out to uh, Zach with ZKH Films, uh, Tricia and Tracy Cantley, Cantley Roofing, um, and then we have a few others that have done for the broadcast itself as well too. Um, also uh, Cantley Roofing, Whole Home Pro with Sean. Uh, he's actually stepped up and ordered some stuff for the broadcast. Okay. So yeah. sound equipment and everything else. I mean, this thing's going to look like ESPN. Yeah, that's huge. That's yeah. Huge. yeah, Zach's also going to send in some, uh, uh, even some game footage from the, as the game goes, he's going to send it up to the laptop. So and we're, we're going to do some replays and stuff. Better than ESPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Reed Inc., uh, Edward Jones Investments, mm -hmm. uh, Heather Cernancy Watson Realty, First Choice Plumbing, uh, Gotham City Optics, Central Florida Fence and Tree Service, Eden Baptist Church, uh, and then we also had, uh, for the first time now too, is uh, Kids in Positive Places, Changing the World One Life at a Time, mm -hmm. uh, contribute. So I think that just fits well with what you're doing also with the program yep. is, I mean, these kids, you're changing them one life at a time. Yep, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, I, I think uh, with us, you know, just implement what we want to do on the football field and then in the community to a lot of our older guys. They're the positive role models to the younger kids right. who actually get to see them every single day. So um, our, our older guys are, are, are leaving. They're actually, um, you know, doing it the right way and, and showing, you know, the younger kids how it's supposed to be done. And I think uh, just that alone, you know, helps us as an entire community. Yeah. And, you know, the obvious thing in the background that is new back here that we're also sitting on are these new chairs. Yeah. I mean, they're nice. Yeah, they're no. That's first class. They got the Hornets logo on it, but also the Hornets spilled out. Yeah. Be shared for a whole bunch of things, but yep. looks impressive, especially if you're having a team meeting or anything else in here. Yep, just the beginning. I think um, it might be maybe 30 to 35 chairs. Um, of course, the quarterback club, but everyone donating, we're able to use these not only in the locker rooms here, but we're able to take some over to the, to the football field because the locker room can get crowded, you know, it's not that much space and we only have like a couple of benches in there. So now we can put some of the chairs off to the side or even in the middle so um, everyone can be comfortable. But uh, this is just the beginning. I know we kind of want to switch up the color, maybe have uh, where it's black, orange, 
where it's white at the top, maybe black. So we'll probably get another 30 soon. Um, so we're able to use it when we have special events as well. So I'm um, extremely thankful for, for all the donators who, who've been able to help us out throughout the year. And I, I know it'll continue to happen. And all these people that we read out, we know there's probably twice as many or yep, even yep, more. Yep, Cameo Towns, I had a couple of them in my head. Um, he took our senior pictures, yes. then charged the thing. Uh, Jeremy Gordon, who's actually yeah, um, our board yeah. alum, he's, he's sponsoring um, the football program as well. So we'll have all their banners up by, by uh, yeah, the Union County game, which will be next week, which will be a big game. Yeah. Uh, but, but there's so many people behind the scenes that, you know, really don't even want to take credit for anything. Uh, but, but it's a lot that's happening. And if we do leave you out, we don't do it intentionally. We would like to recognize you because that also shows the amount, it shows the kids the amount of support that we have mm -hmm. beyond just what they see regular. So please let us know so we can put that out there and uh, give them some, uh, some uh, credit as well. Now I heard that a new term last week and I feel like I need to share it with you because I went up to St. Louis on a, a conference uh -huh. and I just, as soon as I heard it, I thought immediately of what like our program is about, mm -hmm. and the, the term is humble swagger. Mm. Yeah, meaning that we know we're good. Yeah, we're humble about yeah. it, yeah. and that we don't just go out there and tell everybody, you know, we're we're state champions Perfect. year in year out. But we, we just show up, and people know yeah. that and yeah. the way we carry ourselves, the way the program is, the way y'all coach. Yeah, uh, humble swagger seem, seems to fit. No, 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 that's perfect for us. Yeah. You know, it's just you know sometimes you know I can tell my guys in any pack. Mm -hmm. If they're walking towards me, if they're with some you know, people I don't know or recognize, I know my guys. Because when we get off the bus, there's a swagger, there's a confidence about us, but you talk about putting the work in all week, never complain. Um, I got a humble group. I got a humble group who, 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 you know, they're trying to do it the right way every single day. And I think, you know, that leads to a lot of positive results. And, um, uh, it'll continue to be that way, but but I, I definitely believe that fits us. And you talk about humble also with coming out of a game like last week, mm -hmm. where you know you're the heavily favored one coming mm -hmm. in. We talked about that about how you keep them motivated. Mm -hmm. They're they're really just trying to hold themselves to that standard. But also whenever they come out, I mean those guys didn't go out there and sit on the bench. They were they were cheering on those those younger guys getting in there with their opportunity to put some something on them. Yeah, you know, I, and we we. We talked earlier um, before the game, and then even at halftime, we were up. Um, the older guys knew that the, the, the younger guys would have an opportunity to play. And I got a mature group, so uh, there was no laughing, no laughing, no, no playing around. These kids were actually cheering. They were kind of coaching guys up. And, you know, that just shows a sign of a, a really good football program because, you know, us being able to put the young guys on the field, um, we know injuries occur, especially later on the, during the season, heck, even early in the season, but in the playoff, a lot of things happen on the fly. And, you know, if you don't have those reps as a player and your first time getting those reps are, you know, probably the biggest game of your life, which is a playoff football game, um, we really don't know how the kids, you know, could, could react to that. So I think we've been able to last um, probably two out of the last three games, work some younger guys in, watch them on film. Um, and it, it was a lot of young guys who showed some positive signs that can help us going forward. And last week, or a week before last, I'm trying to catch up with the bye week, mm -hmm. but you got a lot of different guys involved. Mm -hmm. uh, were able to get, I mean, you, you can really score at will, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, just given what, you know, Coach Jackson's trying to rebuild over there. Mm -hmm. and So he's, he's mm -hmm. realistic as well too. Yep. But, uh, but it was it was good to see some plays drawn up where guys can go across and yep. you know, I mean, yep. seeing Alvin yep. make a yep. great catch, go yep. across and score, and yep. really just beat them with talent, but also still running solid plays. Yeah, solid plays. Um, right, we, we definitely wanted to keep Keenan involved as the star running back, and I think he, he was probably right under 100 yards in, in two quarters, which, which is phenomenal. And then uh, I think Matthew McKinley had a couple catches. He ended up scoring a touchdown on the jet sweep where he was able to use his speed to get outside. And of course, right, uh, Caleb had some big catches where he had, had positive yards, run out the catch. 
course, had fun. Right? He was in the special teams uh, with a couple touchdowns being called back. Yeah. Then he would go back and get it on offense with some big catches down the field. So we are able to get a lot of people involved. I think we're going to try to use our tight ends a little bit more uh, because they're easily forgotten about, right? Leland Johnson is a great athlete, but he's having a phenomenal year at defensive end or, or linebacker. The same with Zark. You know, Zark is our middle linebacker. He's the leader of our defense. Um, but we were able to get a jet sweep with him, and he probably, you know, had maybe 40 yards um, on on that big play. So uh, we have so many weapons we try to utilize, um, try to keep everybody involved. Uh, and I think CJ does a great job of getting spreading the ball around. Um, and we'll continue to use that. We'll continue to use that method. And um, so starting with special teams, kind of what are we seeing there? I mean, coverage looked a whole lot better. Mm -hmm. um, uh, obviously, then then mm -hmm. we're, we're first part of the year, mm -hmm. so you've mm -hmm. got some of that. Mm -hmm. But also even how the walls are lining up on the on the receiving side of yeah. it, and yeah. you're blocking your way around yeah. the guys yeah. picking that up. Yeah, we. I mean, I think we do a really good job. Again, hats off to my my coaching staff. We do a really good job with preparing the guys during the week. Not only do we watch it as individuals at home, mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably taking time away from our significant others yeah. or. You know, whatever the case may be, then we watch it together as coaches, we watch it together as a team. So, right, they, they can hear the terminology. They understand what we're talking about. And we, we try to find ways to, you know, have an advantage uh, in, in all of our special teams. And I think we've been able to do a wonderful job. Even even with, you know, our, our extra point, right? I think it was kind of sloppy early on in the year. The snaps are coming off Zach's hand the right way. Zion is catching it, and and Sam is firing off. You know, and it, it looks clean, and we're blocking it the right way. All that stuff tie in, and um, you know, you talk about being able to focus in even when you're up in, in games. And I think most times when you miss field goals or extra points later on in games when you're up a lot, it's because guys kind of lose their focus. But but. Right. I'm always yelling, refocus. I'm always telling the guys to lock in and let's have a clean game. Even when you have three downs and you have to punt, right? Let's 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 try to get two positive yards in the run game, three yards, or, or let's get a, a easy completion. And it's okay to punt the football because we feel like uh, we want to flip the field. We feel like we have one of the best defenses in the state, um, and it's very very hard for teams to drive the ball. 80 plus yards on us. It's very hard. And I'm not saying it won't ever happen, but consistently, it's very hard to do. Um, so uh, we just trust the system and we, we, we trust each other as, as coaches and, of course, the players uh, trust us as well. Um, and I, I love where we are right now. So on the offensive side of the ball, blocking is doing well. Yes. Uh, you're seeing the line step up, yes. a lot of maturity there. Yes. Um, you're seeing the receivers, obviously. You're loaded up receiver. Yep. Uh, Keenan's amazing at yep. uh, tailback. Uh, uh, CJ is really developing. Yep. He's able to check all, yep. uh, which, yep. you know, young quarterbacks, yep. that's, that's huge to yep. be able to do instead of just keying off one guy. Yep. Is, I mean, is there a weakness to your offense? I mean, I, I, I still feel like we, we can get better. Actually, today was probably our best day um, blocking as an entire offensive line. I mean, we were, we were pretty sharp today. And again, you talk about starting uh, two freshmen, right? You know, they're still wet behind the ears. Uh, a ju two juniors, and then there's one senior up front. So I have all these guys next year. Now, Torrance is a big piece to our offense. You talk about the heart and soul of, of what goes on up front. Emotionally, oh, yeah. physically, I mean, he's one of the toughest kids um, I've coached in my coaching career. And just to see him grow and mature and be that leader up front, he helps out these young guys so much. Um, but, but no, today was our probably best day uh, this year so far as far as blocking as a, as a unit. So, yeah, we feel like we can get better. We feel like there's still, you know, more people who can get involved. Uh, you know, Darren Bowie had a, had some big catches in the game. And, right, you know, I know I'm the coach. And, you know, uh, see, I is trying to throw his nephew the ball. Yeah, he, listen, he caught that ball between two people. Nate threw it, and it was a laser. He made two guys miss. You know, so so that was just will and effort. Uh, but but there's so many guys um, 
that will help this ball club win, um, you know, games later on in the season. Um, and we don't get to mention their names every weekend, but right, a lot of them are growing up. A lot of them, are, a lot of them know their role now. So uh, you'll start seeing more of them. And it's impressive to see those younger guys like Nate and everything yep. at quarterback. Yep. But also seeing him yep. as a receiver coming in uh, on the defense. I mean, he's he had a big interception. Yeah. He had a bigger interception against a varsity mm -hmm. starting quarterback, receivers, right? That, I mean, that was early in the second quarter. Right. He read the quarterback eyes. He made a play on the sideline uh, using his speed and athleticism. Um, he's special. You talk about freshman. Right. You know, so, so we got those kind of guys in our program. That'll help us win a lot of ball ball games he, in the future. You also talk about like the leadership that you have out of your older guys helping mm -hmm. the younger guys, mm -hmm. and it's it's been nice to be able to see also um, when you have the JV over there in the middle yep. school over yep. there. And I, I know my son is there, so yep. I'm, I'm there watching. But other people are seeing how those kids are learning the system. Yes. And when you're out there and you're watching the JV or the middle school play. Yes. It looks real similar and sounds yes. real similar, just yes. the younger uh, grass but yes. to the way that your defense talks to each other, the mm -hmm. motion and trying mm -hmm. to shift. Mm -hmm. And so they're picking up and learning at a quicker age. And so I've gotten notice also of other people around the area that said, look over at Hawthorne. Those kids are in middle school and they're already picking up on the system yep. and be able to take advantage and grow quicker. Yeah. Yep. And I think, you know, for us, you know, we've had some success. You know, even outside of you know the last four years, I had some really good football teams. Even my first year, um, we we broke even, but I you know our schedule it was still tough at that time. Um, major improvements, but at that particular time, there was no feeder program, so a lot of these kids were coming. You know, to me, knowing zero, out, I mean, no football. So you're talking about teaching them. You know, the game of football, a lot of things, you know, fundamental things that they should have learned at the age of seven or eight. You know, I'm teaching these kids, or, or not only myself, but the coaches as well, and we're teaching these kids, you know, as, as sophomores, what they should have learned. So now we have that feeder program where it's rec ball, um, it's back, right? Middle school ball is back here. JV ball is back. I don't think that has ever happened at one time in one year uh, for our football program. So the terminology is the same when I'm done with my older guys, right? Young guys, let's go in. We're going to run Eagle this, Eagle 55. We're going to run our plays. We're going to run uh, everything that, that, that we're going to do on Friday night. And they have their own understanding. Uh, the speed might just be a little different, but but the game slow down once you really understand it. So, you know, being able to have the JV guys out on the field and listening to everything that, that we're saying that we're doing, it's going to help us in the future. Now, we, we know defense is just as good and solid mm -hmm. and continues to progress. Mm -hmm. And they were, they were really shutting down the game. I know it probably killed a lot of them to have to come off the field because yeah. I don't even know if y'all let them cross midfield yeah. in the first, uh, yeah. the first few quarters. But they came out into the uh, second quarter, and a lot of your younger guys got in and were able to get some different reps in there. Um, but y'all still held – which they're they're solid athletes. Over no, there. no, no, no. Yeah. That was a good ball. Nothing to take away from. No, that's a good. There, there's some good ball. There, there's some pieces over there. And again, I have a great relationship yeah. with, with Willie Jackson for for a very long time. Utmost respect for him. Uh, you know, just looking at the, those pieces, they're gonna be pretty good. Yeah. You know, they're, they're gonna be pretty good. And then they'll get more kids to sure. go out. It's all about having depth. Um, He's doing it the right way. Um, that program would definitely be one to talk about um, the next couple of years because he, he has some great pieces already. And we see some of that influence that you've had building this with what they're doing over there as well too because yeah. they're also doing the Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, yep. yep. you see them. We yeah. see them yeah. right see them twice a week yeah. before Friday, right? <laughs> we see them, see them three times a week all those. Yep. So let's look forward now to Gibbs. Mm -hmm. Big school, yep. down in St. Pete, a little yep. bit of travel, so yep. a little bit different for the kids to kind of get – an experience almost what it'd be like similar with traveling with college. Yep, yep. I mean, obviously college is a little bit further distance normally, yep. but uh, but at least you get on the road, it's not immediate. You know, you, you have to make that road trip yep. and uh, get them settled. And what's what's some of the challenges y'all face this week? I think, you know, that's one of them. And, and just looking at their record, um, I, I don't, I don't want to say our guys are overlooking anyone, 
Uh, but uh, looking at their record, um, outside people might think, you know, they're a bad football team. They kind of came in with a similar record last year. And a good friend of mine, Lewis Murphy, was the head coach at the time. Uh, it was his first game coaching. Uh, so um, you're talking about lining up five Division One players. Even with a bad record, and you're talking about safety being the inner city school, uh, playing some of the top schools in that area. Uh, so the, their record, you know, might be a little different from ours. But they're playing stiff competition, and uh, they have really good players on the field. And they took us to the wire last year with this same exact team almost. So um, I think we're locked in and focused. Yesterday was a solid day of practice. Uh, today was even better. So I think we're definitely preparing the right way, but, but we're definitely not overlooking them. And uh, from my understanding, this is their homecoming game, which, you know, it'll be a good crowd. Right? A lot of people play a lot harder on homecoming and senior night. So uh, we'll have our work cut, off, cut out for us, but uh, I don't think the travel should be an issue uh, because we, we've been able to travel before. Um, funny thing, uh, you, you, you mentioned, you know, how you know, it's almost a college schedule. You know, CJ asked me, he was like, like, Dad, is there any way we can get polos? I'm like, polos for what? So we have polos that the boys will wear yeah. once they get on the charter bus, okay. right? All of them want to wear khakis. So, so we're, 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 the, our program is changing, man, from top to bottom. Um, I can't wait to see some of these guys, you know, they, they kind of want to dress up. So uh, this is different for us. It's, it's definitely uh, something positive. Uh, and, and I love it, but but the guys are definitely be ready to play. Well, and it gets them ready too for college. you know hopefully for college, but also for just us for the playoffs. Yep. Uh, I mean playoffs should never the guarantee trail. to always be here. Yep. Uh, depending on how the district shakes and yep. shakes out, but uh, there's a lot of things out of our control. But that way they get that comfort. Yes. And yes. They get that experience, and then they you know kids like to dress up as well too. Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's, that's all that. Yeah. That's the rule of that. But they're going to look real similar to us uh, as yeah. far as across the across the way. A lot of big kids, mm -hmm. probably more similar to what we've seen out of Middleburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. and obviously you can't take anything for granted. Nope. But uh, nope. we get there, we take care of business, and hold hold ourselves to our standard. Uh, and then we got another big shot yeah. next week. I mean, every week it seems like we have a big yeah, shot. Yeah, every week. Um, and we try to prepare um, that way during the off season, just knowing um, how our schedule would be would be set up and. Um, prepare us for the playoffs. I think, you know, at the end of the day, that's the most important uh, goal, hopefully for every team. If you have an opportunity to play in the state playoffs, uh, it's one of the best experiences I've had as a coach uh, because it wasn't so good as a player um, <laughs> here. So, you know, and it's, it's just something that, that, that you, like, never forget. You know, you always enjoy and remember, you know, the times playing with, with, with close friends, um, maybe even a coach that you, you developed a relationship with. Uh, but, but us going into the playoffs these last four or five years has, has been huge for our program. And then able to get a win, you know, and, and not only do I speak for myself, but I speak for all the other coaches who are off on the You know, we went to the playoffs. None of us won a playoff game. Now, times were different. Oh, yeah. Of course, uh, we were playing some of those powerhouse schools. But uh, my guys, they're playing powerhouse schools now. They're prov proving themselves um, uh, each year. So uh, definitely a great experience. So uh, I know once we get there, our guys will be ready to go. Well, and you speak of development, we have one near and dear to our heart coming to Gainesville from Vanderbilt yep. uh, this week. Yep. How does that make you feel to see one of your former players playing in the swamp? Listen, when I tell you, I wish I could be the first one in the swamp. I won't even make it because my son Kyle's birthday is on Saturday, and then my dad is having his birthday party on Saturday at four o'clock. Oh man! And if I don't show up to his birthday, oh, yeah. I might not show up to another game. So, uh, but now nah, it's special, man. You know, having you know being able to coach a kid like like Jalen, uh, like like real deal. See him grow up, you know, in front of your, in front of your eyes. As far as not being recruited, as far as being a skinny, undersized kid, um, to develop into an outstanding young man on and off the field. Um, 
I mean, it almost feel like, you know, I have a child of mine mm -hmm. in the swamp. So I can't imagine how his parents feel. I'm pretty sure it'll be, it, it, it'll be a lot of Jalen Ruth fans there. And, and, and it should be because he, he, he definitely deserves it. But um, he helped change his program. He helped change his, his program. Um, he definitely left his print. Uh, not only on the defensive side of the ball, but just his locker room, his energy, everything about him um, makes you want to be around him. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of kids who, who looked up to him, a lot of kids who still look up to him, but he deserved all the success coming his way, and, um, and I'm pretty sure it'll be a lot. Uh, and I think any parent looking back and seeing how he's developed out of this program yep. and other parents that are wanting their kids to, to develop similar mm -hmm. Uh, and to be good, high quality characters uh, as well. I mean, that's that's what you're developing yep, here. Yep, uh, yep, so yep, that's what we're trying to do. It's nice yep. to see. Well, yep. tell us about your shirt you're wearing this time. I mean, well, this is uh, this is an oldie goldie. Oldie goldie? Oldie okay. goldie. Um, I mean, every time you catch me, I'm in Hawthorne gear. Right. At least uh, I, I try to be. I love this place, man. It's not only me, right? Our kids, right? If, we, if we're giving them t shirts, I love seeing it. Uh, but I will say this, the only time I told, I, 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 I said, listen, I don't want to see a Hawthorne shirt or anything, uh, with last week being our bye week, I took the guys bowling. Oh, yeah. So we had food, we had food, the food deal was set up, and I said, you know, let me see you guys, right? Some of them had on the tight jeans, right? They got the haircut. Um, it, was, it, was, it was awesome to see because, you know, on the bye week, Having guys banged up, we, we tried to take a lot of uh, full padded practice away. Most of the things um, we end up doing was running, lifting, and then um, individual stuff, but it was no pads. So once we set up Friday, you know, I wanted to see these guys like let their hair down, right? Don't even think about football. And then when I, when I looked up at, um, we probably had maybe eight lanes blocked off. There, there were like four or five names who are nor who normally probably won't sit beside each other in the locker room and, and talk and joke on their own. I said, yo, that five never really sit and talk with each other. Another five, they never really sit and talk. And, and, and everyone was just communicating with each other. Everyone was laughing and having fun, right? Because even during the season, right, you kind of have to get away from football when you can. And I think that made us closer. Yeah. All of my coaches showed up. Um, I mean, it was, it, was, it was a great feeling. As a head football coach, it was a proud moment. And I've had a lot of proud moments as a coach on the sideline with just seeing all of my players interact with each other, laughing, having fun. Probably one of the best feelings I've had, um, I mean, this, this early season anyway. So... Uh, no, nah, it was definitely fun, man. So those are the times that you see like on the, the movies, remember the Titans yep. and stuff like that, which yep. create this bonding times. Now, yep. who was the best bowler? Oh, uh, I was. <laughs> I was. Oh, man. I, you, mean, I mean, there's listen, nobody else in here to be able to listen, contradict that. If you would have saw me, man, like a couple players, they were like, Coach, were you ever on that? I, I don't know if you remember, like on, uh, on ESPN, there would be like the bowling yeah, games, bowling, or the professional yeah. guys. Like I had like two or three players like ask me, like, Coach, um, were you ever on that show? I was like, yeah, a couple of times. They was like, I can believe you. <laughs> uh, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, I will say this Taurus was pretty good. I think Pierre was good. Um, out of the coaches, I was the best out of the coaches. Okay, okay, uh, okay. I was the best out of the coaches. <laughs> All right, now, on the other end of it, if you had to pick the last coach to be on your team, on your bowling squad. Ooh. To which be on which one, which one coach? needs the bumper lanes, in other words? Um, he's the youngest coach on staff. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have to go with JT Turner. <laughs> Bubba <laughs> Chuck, oh, he was the worst. Bubba Chuck, Chuck was the worst. Oh, man. I felt bad for the guy. <laughs> like, I, I, I felt bad for the guy. Uh, yeah, we should have left the bumpers up for him. Uh, yeah, he couldn't hit a pin. Oh, he man. couldn't hit a pin. Oh, man. Well, what about, so your team, bonding time, who's who's like the, the, the class clown? Oh, man. Listen, when I say I have... I know you got your seven. I have maybe 20 comedians on my team. Yeah. But I think the funniest...
because they kind of come off as like chill, laid back guys like Keenan Johnson, Jaheim Darby. I think they're like the sneaky mm -hmm. guys who like to get their jokes across. They, they always, always have something going on. Um, yeah, I think those two, um, they're pretty funny. And of course, the funniest coach has to be Boba Chuck. Boba Chuck's has to be Boba Chuck. So what he makes up for in lack of bowling, yes. he's, he's, yes. good, he's good with it. Yes. First of all, Greg set him up with, uh, so JT came in a little late, so once um, everyone had started bowling, he started bowling, he didn't get shoes. He didn't get his shoes when he came in. So someone that worked in splits, they were like, oh, sorry, sir, you have to put your shoes on. And she was like, um, you can just come up here with me to grab them. And Greg was like, I bet you won't get a size 18. <laughs> so he's whispering to her. He was like, yo, I wear a size 18. She was like, 18? <laughs> she said, I don't have 18, but I wear 16. Of course, JT probably wears a size 9 or 10. <laughs> he came back with those size 16s oh on. Listen, the kids almost ran out of it. No, no, no. It was, a, it was a fun night. It was a fun night. The vibe just was, was, was perfect. Um, everyone just came out and had a good time. And, and I really think... We got better as a football team, even on our bye week. Yeah. Right. yeah. But you know, having those experiences, creating that opportunity for you know a lot of kids. Some some kids yep. probably would have never known bowling. Yep. Uh, but to create that is is a testament to you and your staff yep. uh, in putting that together. So uh, anything, anything, good words of advice as we get ready to head down to St. Pete for uh, Gibbs. Oh, uh, no, just come and support us. We'll we'll need some crowd support. Uh, I mean, of course, our fans, they, they've been awesome all year. Um, but, but you know, we, we really have something to cheer for. I, I just sit back and think about, you know, where some of our guys were, you know, maybe last year or the year prior, and, you know, see them develop as, as young men, um, just seeing them grow. Like, that's what it's about. Like, I'm probably one of the most competitive coaches there is. And, of course, I want to win every game I coach in, but... A lot of these kids are, are winning in life. And that has a lot to do with, you know, who's raising these kids. It has a lot to do with who's coaching these kids, who's teaching these kids. And uh, we have a special, special group. Uh, I know for a fact that it'll continue to be that way because, you know, our older guys lead by examples and they're awesome role models. Uh, but, but, but being able to see the JV guys out the last couple weeks on the field with us, and I'm able to watch, you know, that next Jaden Root. I'm able to watch that next CJ. And there's a lot of talent uh, on our middle school teams and JV teams. So uh, we're heading in the right direction and it'll continue to be that way. And real quick, I know we've taken up a lot of your time, but what did it mean to get a shout out from your former coach on Twitter? Oh, no, that was huge. You know, uh, we actually spoke, we actually spoke early, early that day and like we hadn't talked in a while, which is fine, right? He's a busy guy, right? I'm a busy guy, but I'm not busy like him. Right, right. But but to hear him rave about what's going on in Hawthorne, I didn't tell him. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and don't get me wrong, he's still tied in with a lot of people from the University of Florida. He's still tied in with a lot of former players, um, not only myself. So he knew every single thing that was going on in Hawthorne. Every single thing. And we talked for almost 30 minutes. Um, he'll get down to speak to my team um, soon. But but no, nah, it was it was I mean it was awesome, man. You talk about one of the best head college football coach um, at his time when he was doing it. Um, you know, giving you a shout out to, you know, a, a town that a lot of people forget about. Definitely spoke volumes, so um, it was it was it, it felt it felt great. Um, I, I was I was more so happy that you know the players who who's been in the program, right, who's, who's helped change our, our entire program, whether it's girl basketball, um, football, right. He remember Greg being a coach. How's your brother? Uh, I know he had CJ by now. And I was like, yeah, you know, our basketball team, they've been making state championship runs and all this kind of stuff. Um, no, it was, it was awesome to talk to him, and then, you know, the text uh, or the tweet, I'm sorry, came out of nowhere. 
you know, it, 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 it's just speaking from the heart, sure. uh, but, but it, was, it was definitely a good show. Well, people are recognizing what you're doing here and, uh, and what your team is doing here, yeah. uh, your team of staff, uh, but also what the quarterback club, what y'all are helping us uh, do thank here. You. Thank so, you, thank you, thank you. Thank y'all for thank making you. that possible. We need more. We need, yep. uh, there's always stuff that we can do. There's, yep. Uh, there's tons of improvement that, that needs to be done. Yep. Uh, have you seen the field lately? Yep. The field's yep. looking amazing. Yeah, yep. I think, listen, I, I think Kelly is cutting his field himself. He's probably right Yeah, he's probably cutting his yeah. field himself twice a week. I got to give a shout out to, to Reggie Strickland, mm -hmm. right? Right, he's he's jumping on the lawnmower. He's coming by to cut the practice field once or twice a week. Hey, what do you need me to do at the stadium? There's so many people, man. So many people that's involved, that's behind the scenes, right? If I'm not able to call your name out right now, I appreciate you. I, uh, it means a lot not only for myself, but the rest of the coaching staff, and then uh, our football program, the community, whoever you are, uh, we greatly appreciate everything that you're doing. Uh, so it's definitely not going well, to you got, you got Tracy out there cutting it. And then I think a few other days you had Kyle and his dad. Yeah, yeah, I think Kyle, Kyle did some things. <laughs> so Kyle did some things on his own. Right. And then I don't know if we did the radio show. Um, I don't know if we did the show when Kyle, he bought food for the football team. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so, right, so I can give Kyle a shout out from maybe, maybe a week or two weeks ago. He bought food for the entire football team. Uh, I know uh, Rick. Uh, Jaquez Walker, yeah. they bought pizza for the entire football right. team. Maybe the same day, oh, wow. um, Kyle is feeding the team tomorrow after practice. Nice. Uh, it's so many. So Kyle, yep, thank you as well. He would normally send Greg and I pictures about some improvements. Mm -hmm. and, right? This is what it means to be a Hawthorne. Yeah. Kyle no longer cuts our field. Mm -hmm. And he's going to see about our field. Right. He's not on the contract. Right. So that's just a guy being a Hawthornian player here, having love for this program. That's what Hawthorne is about. And nobody take care of take care of home like us. Right. right. And um, so I'm lucky to have all these people around um, to definitely help us out. Good deal. Yeah. Well, well, we'll look to touch base next week. And uh, we appreciate y'all joining us here on CI's Coaches Show. Um, if you can, join us down in St. Pete. If not, join us on Facebook, and uh, we'll have a good broadcast this week. The following week, we hope to step up our game a little bit. we got some equipment coming in. Uh, Zach's got his stuff with ZKH. Uh, Sean's got his stuff with uh, Whole Home Pro that they're uh, getting several different camera angles. Uh, we may even have like a little bar down at the bottom that tells you sports from around the area, yeah, sports time. going on. We time. get a statistician. We might even have uh, that going on. Man, yeah. We might have yeah. all kinds of stuff yeah. going on. Yeah. But, uh, uh, we appreciate everybody that's contributed. If you have an idea that's something that we're not doing or something we can do better that you want to help out, please reach out to us. We want to uh, we want to make this program better and we want you to be a part of it. So on behalf of myself, Matt Cernsey, I appreciate Coach Ingram joining us here for the CIS Coaches Show. We'll see you all next week. So long, everybody.